Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whatever time you're watching this show. This is Senior Issues, etc. And this is the first show of our 13th season. Whew. Could you believe that? We're still alive and we're still filming. If you were way back there in September 19th, uh, 2000 when we did our first show and they said we didn't have enough material to last two months. Here we are going into our 13th year. And as you know, the first show of every season, I just like to bring the crew to you because the crew is the guts of the show. We couldn't have a show without the crew. And we have become one family. We're taking on a new enterprise this year. We have a baby on our show. We're taking on an intern from College of Lake County. And she's the baby, and we're going to baby her along. And she's going to get a college credit for doing the show. So I was going to start right off the bat with the producer of the show, Gloria. Lay it on us. Well, I'm also wanted to say that I'm really excited that I can't believe that it's we've been here for 13 years and the first thing I want to do is say my age I'm 82 years old so oh, I'm 80 I'll throw that in yeah. so that um, we want people you know we want to be examples that you can become 70 you can become 80 you can become 90 and you can still be available and a spokesman for your age group because we say that's what we are is that we give to the community um, because that's what our goal is in senior issues is to be uh, a, a spokesperson for seniors. Uh, the uh, thing that I wanted to stress is that we also want to, we're a voice, we are a voice for the voiceless but also in voting, a senior is a voice for the voiceless. And I think it's extremely important in this time that everyone, doesn't matter who you vote for, it matters that you vote. And that's my whole thing. And the next one up on the lineup who has been with us from the start is Selby Hussey. Selby, why don't you give it to us? Well, I, I too, I'm uh, very grateful for the the ability to come here today. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I did start with you all in the beginning and uh, as a director, and I, th I think it's been a, a tribute to the, the skill that uh, Peter and everybody else has uh, implemented into the program that we, uh, uh, that we can do this, the, mm -hmm. the uh, excellent job of bringing uh, the, the age factor in. I'm, uh, 89, pushing, this is my 90th year, and uh, I never thought I'd live this long. It just didn't. But uh, I've had a lot of um, uh, medical problems in the last year, haven't been around, but uh, I'm getting better, I think. So maybe I will make 90. <laughs> yes. After all. After all. <laughs> and the third of our lineup, this is our baby, which we're so proud to have. This is a new venture that we're in, and her name is Barbara Settle. And she has come with us, and she is out of College of Lake County, which she will get a college credit for internshiping the show. And she also will take a test through Comcast and get a certification at the end of the semester. Barbara, we're so delighted that you could be with us, and we're all going to baby you, and you're going to learn a lot this year and we're happy to have you on board with your enthusiasm. Thank you so much. Uh, I am extremely blessed to be here. God afforded me this opportunity. Um, I was walking the halls of uh, CLC of which I'm a student and um, I happened to look at the information board and there was an ad for an internship and this was something that I had been praying for and I immediately got in touch with you and you were so engaging on the phone and um, I am just so blessed and pleased to be here and I want to thank the crew for welcoming me and just walking me through and I look forward to this experience because it means so much to me and I just want to be able to do as you all have done, give back to the community and be able to teach some things uh, like you're going to be teaching me and instructing me and I'm just happy to be here. I'm extremely blessed. All right, now don't you go away because we have the next uh, set of the crew coming up. Be right back. Don't turn that dial. Okay, let's change shifts now. Hi, we're back. 
I have my next set of crew members. That I'd like you to see them and what their faces are and how long they've been with us. I'd just like to talk to you for a few minutes. You know, if you want to contact me, we are a, a charitable production company with our 501c3. And we, our object of the show is to bring a voice to the voiceless and to show you in the community who is doing what. So if you have anything that you feel is important or you want to come on, please contact me at vitaverdennetzero.net or my number will be listed on the screen. And you can contact me and we certainly will follow through with it because this is a community service show. And so we'd like to hear from you because we build our shows around what our audience is looking for. And through the years, our audience has really expanded. In this last season, since we've gone online, I've heard from California, uh, uh, from Florida, from Arizona, and from Texas, uh, from people who have watched the show. And we're, we've kind of pioneered this, and so we have become kind of a role model of I don't call us old people, I call us seasoned, not seniors, we're seasoned people that we have the guts and the normality to come on and we got these little gray cells going that we can give it our all and it doesn't matter what your age is. Now here's another gal who's been with us from the start, Pat Thompson, and she's part of the kitchen band and she's still going with her music. Pat, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I was born and raised in Chicago, came to Libertyville, and there is where I met Vita. And Vita asked me if I would like to partake in her opportunities here. And I said, sure. And I'm so happy to be a staff member. I get so much out of it. In fact, I was thinking, you know, we do live longer now, so we have problems that happen that didn't happen before. But Vita has so much information that we can use about our safekeeping and our fast-paced life now. So I really appreciate being a member. And even though I'm very busy with what I do, I still want to listen to you, Vita. Well, it, it isn't really me. It's that I have information coming to me. Mm -hmm. And since we don't have a manuscript how to do it, we're the first generation, do you realize, that is living this long. And we thank God for it. Right. And we thank God that we know how to communicate and know how to live this long and have a higher quality of life. Now we have Judy Ward, and she's got uh, some talented kids. She's going to tell us a little bit about herself. Okay, um, I actually have lived in Gurney since 1989. Uh, I am a retired teacher. I have taught for 24 years um, in various places in the States and uh, also in Germany. And uh, I do have uh, two daughters, a husband and two daughters and uh, two dogs. I just got a puppy. <laughs> so uh, I have an exciting life. I've had an exciting life. Good. Uh, and then we have uh, the comedian of our show, and he's also a teacher. What do you mean by that comedian? And, uh, the comedian, and he's a, a teacher, and he's got a lot of t uh, talent. What he is, is uh, he is very active in the Kiwanis, and I think he wants to talk about that, and he wants to talk about football, and he wants to talk about himself. <laughs> so what we do is we give him the floor to do it. Well, I'm, as you said, I'm Dave Bentley. I've lived in Lake Bluff since 84. I consider myself an active uh, member of the community. I just don't sit around, although it looks like it. Um, I uh, was with FedEx for 21 years. At the age of 50, I, I, I was a couch potato at that point. And so I went back and got my master's in special ed. And I've been teaching off and on. And I enjoy that, but I also enjoy doing your show. And I also direct community issues, which is also our community forum, which is also on on a Comcast. And we give exchange uh, guests. Yes, I'll, we have. I've got a guest from you, and you've got a guest from me. And then I also, you being in Kiwanis, I was the program director there. And we, whenever I had a guest that you might be interested in, uh, you 
you, you said, please, please let me know. So we, it's been a, a symbiotic relationship. Yes, it has. And I enjoyed it. And you're good looking, too. That's another reason why I'm here. <laughs> Well, you know, when we pass a certain age, we're all good it's looking. A tough crowd. We're just so, so happy, I think, to be going on and to be doing the pioneering work. And uh, it's because of the crew and it's because of the impetus that the crew's energy, you know, that kind of fuels us. And we're getting such a good response from it. I'm getting response from different places in the country. And our vision wasn't that we would be the only show, but that shows of this quality and this type uh, would network across the country. And since people are living longer, then we'd have this uh, information line of how to do it because we tried to cover as many areas as possible. And I'm going to give you my email again. It's VitaVerdon at netzero.net. And stick around because the best is yet to come. We have more to come. Thank you. Hi, we're back again. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit more. When we first started the show in 2000, uh, we started with a small group, but we gained an audience really fast. Uh, the first thing that happened to us is Channel 2 picked us up. And in the beginning, it was really hard for me to get guests because th they never heard of us and nobody wanted to come on and make a fool of themselves. But after we were on uh, Channel 2 News and the Tribune picked us up and the uh, Herald, wrote an article and uh, the New Sun had written an article and uh, the Pioneer Press. So all the newspapers covered us. Then I had every lawyer in Lake County wrote me and I was getting calls. I was inundated with calls. But the first catastrophe happened to us on the very first Christmas holiday. What I had booked was a choir from uh, the senior consul in Libertyville, where I live, Libertyville, Illinois, and I had booked two Jewish ladies from Highland Park who were going to come on and show us how to make latkes, which are potato pancakes, which they make during the Hanukkah holiday at Christmas time. Okay, so the show was filmed on a Monday, and Sunday night we had the biggest blizzard of the year. And so a half hour before the show, uh, which my main feature was this choir, which consisted of 20 people with the leader. She called and she said, oh, you better put your substitute act on because we can't make it. I said, what substitute? You know, I'm not Channel 5 or Channel 2. So we were really in a dilemma. And it was Salby, Gloria, myself, and there was one other lady, oh, two other ladies, June and Carol. So what we did is Gloria is Jewish and Selby is from England. So how we set it up, we said childhood memories. And we did this, we improvised, you know, when the pressure is on you, you know, something's got to squeeze out. We improvised and Selby told uh, a childhood story is of his holiday in England. Uh, Gloria told, uh, coming from a Jewish Orthodox background, how they celebrated Hanukkah. And I'm uh, Italian, Sicilian, Italian. And I told of uh, some Sicilian uh, Christmases that we have. And, you know, unbeknownst to us, this turned out to be one of our best shows. We had more compliments on that show than any other show of the year. So you never know when you put yourself to the test. And I'm telling you this to say this, that it doesn't matter what your age is, that you know whatever gifts that are within you, they don't deteriorate. Your body could deteriorate, but your gifts come out of you. And so I, I like to be an example for people, you know, is if I could do it, you could do it too. So if you have an idea or you want to see something, that there's something you'd like to understand or see uh, in a closer range under a microscope, contact us because we are a community service show and 
this show is for you and we'd like to hear the response. Because of all the response, we are going into our 13th season. And I've had people come up and say, you know, you're too old to be doing this. You're never too old to be, to continue to communicate. And so that's what we want to do. And I'm bringing out our next set. So this next man, I, his name is Joe Pazalagua, and that means pass the water. So I always think of him as <laughs> Joe pass the water. So Joe pass the water. Tell us about you and your cars. Well, I just took my car to uh, the uh, uh, the mansion in uh, Lake Villa. Well, you have to tell them how many cars you oh, have I've and got what four, kind. I've got four model, two Model Ts and two Model A Fords. They're so, uh, they're so old cars. So what years are they? 1912, which is 100 years old this year. Uh, my 1914, I had that since 1954. I bought it. And then my two Model A's. I've got two real nice Model A's. One's a 1930, the other one's a 1931. Now, so, I know you're in a lot of movies. You get called. Oh, yeah, we went, I was in The Babe and uh, uh, the, uh, the flag, uh, flag of Our Fathers. I was on that. And there was quite a few others that we were on. You now, know. do you do the remodeling on your cars, or do you send them out? No, I do all my own work. I do painting and to do the uh, mechanical work on them. Yeah, Did I you do just, just start it by monkeying around? Or? Well, when we were kids, uh, uh, my brothers and our neighbors, we'd all, we lived in Chicago at the time, and we'd all pull our cars into the alleys and everybody come out of their garages and then they work on their cars. And I was a young kid at that time. You know, I was only like say 14, 15 years old. And I'd be underneath there with everybody else, you know, with taking parts apart and what have you. So that's how I learned the hard way. Uh huh. And uh, you know, at that time it was easy to work on cars because they were so simple. I can't work on a, a modern car today. Uh -huh. They're too complicated for me, you know, the, all the electronics and what have you. Uh huh. So I, yeah, it it helped me out when I was in the service. I became a mechanic in the service. I drove a jeep, and uh, so it it helped. Well, you know, uh, Joe did some work on his set. He put this on wheels, <laughs> which we were, you know, we have to build our own set every time we come into the studio to do a show. And he put this on wheels, and he's been very helpful for moving around the set. So we're just so happy to have you with us. Yeah, now, you, the were, next... you were talking about age. Well, I'm 88. Still, and still gro going. Still trying to go, yeah, start, keep. My daughter tells me, she says, Dad, don't ever stop working on that cars, you know. So evidently, and that don't must, ever stop working on this show. And this show also, you know, what I do here too. Uh -huh. So it's it's very gratifying, you know. I, and so. I think you know that that is the that is the secret of longevity is to stretch it out. Is you have to keep on going, and you have to find out what your interest is. Uh, now, when I uh, first started the show what I made was a statement, because I used to be like a workaholic. You know, I would work real hard and then I would play real hard, take off for a couple months and play real hard. And when I first started, I said, you know what? This is really fun. When it ceases to be fun, I'm out of here. When, it's, when it starts being like a hard, straining job, I don't want to do it anymore. But I can honestly say, you know, after 12 years of doing the show, I have learned so much about what's going on around us, about myself, uh, about what could be accomplished, how you pioneer something, and how to communicate. What do people want to hear in people our age in communicating that I haven't had time to think of all my aches and pains because you're focused on something that you're interested in. So I know years ago I read this book by Rolla May, It Takes Courage to Create. And to be creative, you have to learn where your passion lies. And once you find out where your passion lies and what you enjoy doing, you know, it's fun. It's fun to be creative and that creativity never leaves you. Now the next young man I have here, 
on the show is Art Kick, and he's not really a kick in the pants. He comes from a long line of kicks, and he comes from, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, four generation of kicks in this area. Am I right on that, Art? I think that's probably pretty close. I believe mean, my father came here when he was 21, and he had some brothers here. Uh, but uh, I have uh, came from a family with all boys. There were six How many of us. boys? There were six brothers. I had five brothers and myself. Five uh, brothers and you, all boys. All oh, boys, boy. all boys. I was born. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. Born, Poor mother. Born and raised in Libertyville, lived here most of my life. Uh-huh. Uh, got on this show, I think about three years ago. Uh-huh. have thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh-huh. Uh, seems that uh, every show I learn something new, uh -huh. something exciting. There's always little things that you pick up all the time. The other good part is I get to listen to the guests a lot of times. Uh -huh. And they impart some very good information uh -huh. for seniors. I'm, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm 85 years old, so uh -huh. I'm not a kid. I like to fool around uh, uh, with houses. I like to kind of remodel and mess around with stuff like that. And I still do a little bit of that. Not, not Art as... is very handy and he's very versatile. He's moved in different positions on the show and he does our, he makes our DVDs and he does a lot of outside work for us on the show. So he's been very versatile and very beneficial to us. We're so happy that we, you know, were able to capture him when he moved into our senior building. We immediately captured him. We said, ah, fresh blood, you know, bring him on. <laughs> And so we're so happy about that. And now the next gal we have, she's a newcomer with us, and her name is Sharon uh, Klish. Sounds like dish, right? <laughs> yes, that's Klish, very have good. I got yeah, it right? Klish, and it sounds like it dish. Is. Yes. So Sharon <laughs> Klish, that sounds like dish. <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I Do I have to tell my age? No, because we don't I have. Not no, to, that's just in for case the men. Some, you know, thank you. <laughs> a, a few of us that no. are over eighty. <laughs> no, I've been I've been retired. I was injured down at work and uh, put me on an early retirement. What kind of and, work did you do? Um, well, I worked at United Airlines. Uh huh. And um, unfortunately, I did. I had an accident while I was uh, downstairs in baggage. Uh huh. And uh, so it sent me to an early retirement. Uh -huh. But since then, I've been volunteering. I guess that's the name of the game for me, uh -huh. is volunteering. And uh, I've been with the ladies' Christian group for the last eight or nine years. Uh -huh. And um, I've, I've also um, started exercising three times a week in, in water. And I met someone who um, owned a greyhound, which I own, uh -huh. and she got me into volunteering helping out the greyhounds at Emerald Kennels in Wisconsin. I uh -huh. <laughs> have to put that in for my doggies. Um, what is your dog's name? Mine, it, it was Casino Dealer, and uh -huh. his name is Dealer. Uh -huh. But um, we, we do every, every other week. Uh, we go out, there's about 20 dogs that come in from the Florida racetracks. Uh -huh. Thank goodness that we're, we're um, advocates now to try and stop the dog racing in, uh -huh. in the United really States. Because that's really hard on the dogs. It's terrible. It? It's terrible. And, uh -huh. and it, put, it takes such a toll on these poor animals. So you're it's, in the advocacy group? I am. Uh, and I am, to, totally. to restore them to like a normal life, is that what you do? We try to, yes, yes. Uh -huh. they, they grow up in a 36 by 36 by 36 cage. Uh -huh. And uh, when we get them, uh, that's all they know are the cage and, and racing. Uh -huh. And they, they, the way they, t they come to us, and they're just so loving, and, and they just want this attention and this love that we're, we're able to give them. Uh -huh. and, we get adopters out there. I think a couple of weeks ago we had like nine adoptee families, uh -huh. and uh, so it's nice to to have an organization like that. That is, and then uh, of course and that's fulfilling for you too. It is, mm -hmm. and now uh, Judy, the gal you uh -huh. interviewed earlier, Judy Ward, uh, I'm in the women's group with her. Uh -huh. And she asked me if I wanted to come and help out here. Uh -huh. And like I said, volunteer is my middle name. Uh -huh. So I'm here volunteering. That's what keeps this little gray cells going. Yes. Now the job that Sharon's going to be doing is called floor director. And if 
what a floor director does is she sits and she's the one that holds up the timing and has the time cue and sits by the monitor and tells me stretch it or that's it <laughs> cut it's a show so we're just so happy to have her aboard now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the up-and-coming shows that we have within the next uh, few uh, weeks and months I have the mayor uh, Terry Wepler of Libertyville coming on. Now recently what our community did is as a package deal, you know, the electric company has been deregulated. So they have, a, as a package deal, and I understand this show goes to Evanston too, and I have a brother that lives in Evanston, and I understand that the deregulation, which is across the board uh, in Evanston also, they've taken on a package deal, which is an alternate electric company. And so uh, I did notice that uh, my electric bills, even since th this alternate has only been on now, I, I think just a, a very few months, but I did notice that my electric bills have gone on, uh, down some. So I have uh, the mayor booked for in the future coming on, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about this deregulation and also uh, the problems that he's facing in this particular Libertyville community. Uh, then, then I have the, our county clerk of Lake County, which is Willard Helander, and she's uh, the head clerk, uh, the head honcho over uh, in uh, Waukegan for uh, voters. And you know, this is a voting year, so she generally comes on and tells all the latest things and if there's anything in the voting booths and the whole lowdown, I have her coming on. And then I have somebody else booked, which is a therapist for seniors. Because living this long and uh, uh, seniors are not exempt from any kind of problems that the rest of society faces, only we have more entailment of them because we're living longer and no one has told us how to do this. So I think that this will be beneficial. So uh, I'm happy that I have this kind of lineup and I've also got uh, the head, her name is Vera, from over at the uh, Senior Council in Libertyville and they're going to give us the lowdown on what the uh, Senior Councils in different communities are doing and what they're doing in this uh, neck of the woods up till now. But uh, I'd like to talk to you, each and every one of you. I appreciate uh, your patronage and I appreciate you uh, watching us and being an audience because it's because of you that we're on the air. <clears throat> we couldn't have survived to this length. So I, know, I want you to know from the heart of every one of our crew members, I speak for the crew, we appreciate everything that you've done and everything that you are doing. But now you know what time it is when each one of you comes to the end of your rope. You know what I want you to do? You've heard it before. I want you to tie a knot and hang on. You know why? Because the best is yet to come and we really believe it. Catch the spirit.